Welcome to part three of our three-part series on network diagrams and the critical path. In this video, we examine types of relationships in a network diagram. We'll look at methods for decreasing the critical path or the overall project duration and understand the importance of estimating activity durations correctly. The images in this video come from Pearson's textbook, Project Management in Practice. Here we can see different types of relationships. A represents sequence tasks. A is preceded by nothing, B is preceded by A, and C is preceded by B. B represents a burst. Y and Z are preceded by X. Y and Z can begin at the same time if you wish, and X is a burst activity, with Y and Z bursting from X. C represents a merge activity. J, K and L can all begin at the same time, if you wish, but they need not occur simultaneously, but all J, K and L must be completed before M can begin. So M is a merge activity, J, K and L are merging into M. And D shows parallel relationships. Z is preceded by X and Y, and AA is preceded by X and Y. In project management, sometimes it's also useful to use leads and lags in a project schedule. These add greater flexibility and there are two instances where they are handy. The first is when activities of long durations delay the start or finish of successor activities, so you might want to break into smaller components to avoid long delays. And number two, to constrain the start and finish of an activity. Let's look at both in more detail. A lag means a delay and directs a successor activity to be delayed. For example, activity C can only start three days after activity B has been finished, such as waiting for a painted room to dry before installing a cabinet. And there's the relationship, activity B, paint room, and then there's a lag, waiting for the paint to dry, and then we can complete activity C, install cabinetry. You can establish a finish to start relationship dependency and specify three days of lag time. Lag time is entered into project management software as a positive value. Lead means having an overlap and allows acceleration of a successor activity. This means you can start the activity sooner. For example, activity E should start three days after activity B has begun, so there's an overlap or an activity can start when 50% of its predecessor has been completed. That is, you can specify a finish to start relationship with a lead time of 50% for the successor activity. Lead time is entered into project management software as a negative value. These are examples of finish to start relationships. Up the top in A, activity B cannot start before activity A has finished. For example, you have two activities, activity A, dig foundations, and activity B, pour concrete. Activity B, pour concrete, cannot begin until the activity A, dig foundations, has been completed. That's quite straightforward. For B, there is actually a lag now of 19 days before activity B can begin. And C, there is a lead of two days where activity B can overlap with activity A. Here we look at start to start relationships. A at the top, activity B cannot start until activity A starts. The dependent activity can begin any time after the activity that it depends on begins. The start to start link type does not require that both activities begin simultaneously. For example, if you have two activities, activity A pour concrete and activity B, level concrete. Activity B, level concrete cannot begin until the activity A, pour concrete begins. And down the bottom for B, activity Q cannot start until five days after activity P has begun. We can see that lag there. Finish to finish relationships. At the top A, 
Activity B cannot finish until activity A finishes. The dependent activity must be completed any time after the activity that it depends on is completed. The finish to finish link type does not require that both activities be completed simultaneously. For example, you have two activities, activity A, add wiring, and activity B, inspect electrical. So activity B, inspect electrical, cannot be completed until the activity A, add wiring, is completed. Down the bottom for B, we have a lag of four days between prototype and testing in a finish to finish relationship. And here it is in a network diagram. We can follow the dotted lines that indicate different lags. For example, there is a start to start lag of three days between activity A and B. When activity B is completed, there is a finish to start delay of four days. Between activity D and activity E, we have a start to start lag and also a finish to finish lag. Activity E and F have a finish to finish lag. Here is an example using start to start relationships in laying a pipe. So first we dig the trench and there's a three day lag before we can start laying the pipe. And then there's another three day lag before we can re refill the earth. Here we can use laddering. Activities can begin sooner and not delay work. You can segment the larger activity giving the appearance of steps on a ladder. Here's our example laying one kilometer of pipe below. You don't need to dig the full length of the trench. You dig, lay the pipe and refill in smaller segments. On the image we've split this into three parts. We start by digging the first part of the trench. When that's finished, we can start digging the next third of the trench. Plus, we can lay the pipe in that first third we've already dug. When both of these are done, we can dig the final part of the trench. At the same time, we can lay the pipe for the second part of the trench, and we can refill the first part of the trench, and so forth. So there is a clear overlap, and we can progressively dig some trench, lay pipe, and refill, without waiting for the whole one kilometre of trench to be dug before we start laying the pipe. In project management software, the predecessor column can be used to show relationships, including the type of relationship and lags and leads, and here's an example. This task has a predecessor task called 10. The SS indicates a start to start relationship with a two day lag being plus two days. We know it's a lag because it's a positive number. Here is another type of relationship called a hammock. This is an activity that spans a segment of the project going across a number of other activities. For example, in organizing a work conference, a number of logistical activities need to be completed such as booking hotels, flights and transport, where checking prices and making the bookings might be completed at any point across a two-month period while a series of other tasks are being done. The duration of hammock activities is determined after the network plan is drawn. Here is an example. The hammock activity shown below, G, needs to be done between week 5 and week 13 and it's tied to activities B, D and F. It needs to start when activity B starts, that is the early start, but must end by the time activity F ends, the early finish. The hammock activity may be stopped and started as needed in that time frame, but it must be fully completed by the end of activity F. For example, getting a final contract signed it can be signed at any time, enabling flexibility to negotiate back and forth throughout the allowable period. But by the time that period is over, the contract must be signed. And there's a note here. The hammock activity follows early start and early finish constraints. In some instances, you want to reduce the project's duration, that is, get it done faster. You may need to reduce the time to market, for example, to recoup development costs or to respond to a competitor. 
You might have incentive contracts to finish early or impose deadlines. For example, the CEO or director might want the project to be completed by a certain date. You might have very high overhead costs and you need to reduce those costs. Or you'll need to transfer resources such as people and equipment to other projects. There are a few options for reducing that time frame. When resources are not constrained, you might try crashing. That is, adding resources to the project. For example, you might double the size of the team. However, just be aware of the law of diminishing return, which means just because you double the team, it doesn't mean you'll get it done 50% faster. You might also outsource some or all of the project work. So by subcontracting to experts, they can get things done faster and potentially better. And this also will free up your resources to work on critical activities. You might also schedule some overtime. But be careful here of burnout in the project team. When resources are constrained, you could try fast tracking. So you could rearrange the logic of the project network so that critical activities are done in parallel or concurrently rather than sequentially. You might also try reducing the project scope, so doing less, or reducing the project's quality, as in perhaps you do one less round of testing. And finally, here are some factors that can limit how fast a project can be done. First is the logical order. What order do activities need to be completed in? There may or may not be flexibility there. Two is the activity duration. So you need to accurately estimate how long activities will take. And if your estimations are poor, this could affect the length of your project. The third is resource availability, the people and equipment. So for example, you might have six buildings to paint and they're all available at the same time. Ah, oh, but the painters aren't. The fourth is imposed dates. For example, the project may not be able to start until the new financial year due to budget planning. And the fifth is cash flow. Money needs to be approved and made available. If there are constraints with cash flow, this can also impact how quickly your project can be completed. And this closes out our three-part series on network diagrams and the critical path. In part one, we learnt what a network diagram is and how to produce one. We learn about the critical path method and you are able to complete a practice activity. In part two, we learn how to do the forward and backward pass in a network diagram with a practice activity. And in this video, part three, we examine different types of relationships in a network diagram, including how to decrease the critical path and the importance of estimating activity durations correctly. There's a separate video available on project estimation techniques.